Hello, this is Sarah Soiled Plant and welcome back to my channel. It is my house plant tour. I'm going to show you everything. I have about 125 plants, depending on how you count plants, but I've got about 125 that I consider plants in my home. And it's not a video if one of my cats does not make an appearance, so Ash says hi. I'm sure this will be a long video, so I'll get to it in just a second, but I do want to preface by saying I did no prep work for this video as far as like making sure my plants are in good looking condition. This is how my plants truly are day in and day out. I did not check for dead leaves. I did not do anything like that. This is just what my plant collection looks like right now. So if that's something you're interested in and you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and let's get to the plants. In this corner of my kitchen next to the sink, I have these two windows. This one is south facing and this one is west facing. So it's not the best light in the world, but it does get some good light and it definitely gets it from both sides. So here is my very poor attempt at making a terrarium. So I technically count this as one plant, even though it's got four in it. It's got my two jewel orchids. This one is love and life and it's got a little tail on this side. I've got this jewel orchid here, which is not doing as well. The roots were very bad on it and it's getting better. It's growing new leaves. This is some sort of fern and it's lost a ton of leaves. And then this is a peperomia. I forget what all of the official names are, but that is what is in my tiny terrarium, which is not doing great. I forget to water it a lot and that is 100% on me. And then over here, I have my pothos enjoy slash pothos pearls and jade i love this plant it is one of my favorite plants it does really well in this window i have it hanging from a little hook and i just love how special all these leaves get they have that nice clean variegation on it and sometimes they get it a little speckly like that and every time i've seen pictures of these plants they always assume that this type is pearls and jade and the ones with the more solid white is the enjoy but i think obviously since they're both in the same plant that it's the same plant just depending on how much light you give it and i feel like the more light i give it the less of that speckling i get in case you're looking for one type of variegation over the other i have a sad basil plant right here i think this is just sad because mostly my experience with herbs is that it does better when you chop it back and then it can regrow over and over and over again. And I don't make enough things with basil that I have gone through this entire plant yet, but I keep watering it and it seems like it cannot take enough water. But the beauty of it is this is my reverse osmosis system. I use reverse osmosis water for all of my plants, no matter you know if they can stand tap water or not, I use this. But when I turn this around, it is actually the perfect height to just water that plant. So often when I'm doing dishes or something, I will water that plant while I'm just sitting here, depending on if it needs it or not. And then this one hidden and tucked in the back here is my lovely rubber plant. This is a Ficus Elastica Ruby with the red leaves. It's doing okay. I feel like it's not getting quite the amount of light it wants, but it is doing pretty well back here. And it does lose leaves quite often but there are always these little tiny ones that are on the bottom. So far it hasn't lost any big leaves, so I'm not too concerned about it just yet. Over here next to my dining room, I have this plant shelf here. That is a west facing window. And we'll start with the top shelf and work our way down. This is my one syndapsis. This is my syndapsis pictus aureus. Very gangly, lots of things flying off it all the time. It definitely wants to climb up and I am not allowing it to climb up quite yet, but it's doing okay and it's still producing leaves. So no complaints here. Right next to it, I have my Ficus Elastica, not the ruby kind, but the regular sort of white version. I absolutely love this plant for its leaves, very impressionalist painter-y. I actually cut this plant right here about a year ago and this new shoot going up is growing from that and this little side stem finally decides to start growing but it's coming in it's coming in pink and speckly so i'm not 100 percent sure what that means but every single leaf that's come off of that new shoot has been pink with little speckles on it so she's kind of doing her own thing but she is 
definitely gigantic. Oh, this shelf is one that I got from Ikea. I got it because I like how high the shelves are and that the shelves themselves are glass. This top one here was supposed to have glass on it, but I decided to remove it so that I can put some taller plants still in this western window. This window gets the most direct light out of any window in my abode here. So I make sure to put all of my sun loving plants in this window. Next to my ficus, I have my one euphorbia. This is a dragon bone and it's loving it. I try to water it about the same that I do with my ZZ plants and you know, try to get, let it stay on the dry side for a little bit before rewatering. And so far so good. I've actually gotten two new little stalks at but the top here, which is so crazy to me. I didn't think I'd be able to get this thing to grow. I would just be happy if it maintained itself and didn't die, but it's actually growing and happy. Like who would have thought, but that's my little Euphorbia dragon bone. Next to that, I have my Philodendron cream splash. I try to put the longer stalks here into the window to give it as much light as possible. It's very happy there and I try my darndest to kind of weave these in between my plants to make sure it gets as much light as possible. It is getting so big, I can't believe how big that plant is getting. I've removed the euphorbia just for a second, just because it actually does have little spikes on it. I don't want it to rip the plants. These are all of my Monstera elbow with low variegation that I am trying to pull the variegation out of. So this is the sort of base of the plant, the mother plant and it has just the tiniest bit of white up here, but the newest one has a nice little smattering of variegation on this side of the leaf. So it's getting better slowly. But these here are all of my cuttings. I have a plan to do a potting up little Q&A this weekend. So if you have any questions for me, leave them down below. But these are all of my low variegation monsteras and this is my newest leaf look at her she's got some sectoral variegation she looks like this one almost which is the best leaf on the entire plant it is almost like that one there's an itty bitty leaf there that's about to unfurl and there's more that's even in the pickle jar here so it's very possible that i might have to break this jar open but for now it is right there getting as much light as humanly possible to pull out more of that variegation and then over here, I have one of my string of hearts. It goes almost all the way to the ground, but it is doing really well. This is not the one I dropped on my head. That is a different one, which I will show you in a bit. Moving down to the shelf below, this is the top cutting I took of that ficus elastica doing well. I've got a couple of new leaves on it. It took so long for this top cutting to actually produce new leaves. It had the same like four leaves on it forever and it finally started producing new leaves so I'm very excited about it. You can tell a plant is healthy when it finally starts producing leaves again. Down here I have one of my philodendron brazils. This is just one where I took a bunch of cuttings and put it into its own pot. I just cannot get enough of how beautiful brazils are. I know some people don't like brazils that much. I mean, I can't really relate to that because I think this is the most beautiful thing in the world. Like all the different color greens, absolutely love it. Then of course we've got my overwhelming little showstopper right here, which is my oxalis, my purple oxalis with the little beautiful leaves and they are so happy. This one is so thirsty, it wants water all the time. It definitely likes to lean towards the window, so I have to rotate it on occasion to make sure that it's not lopsided but these leaves are just amazing. I cannot get over how pretty this plant is. I'm so happy with it. I'm happy I waited for a nice big plant. In the front of that here, I have one of my philodendron micans. I'll show you the other one in just a second, but this is my sort of lovely and beautiful and healthy one. You know, it's got the occasional old leaf on it. You know, every plant does. But this one is so healthy and happy and I'm obsessed with it. Behind the micans and being swallowed by my oxalis back here is my uh, Monstera adansonii. And this is one that I took a bunch of cuttings of one of my plants and planted them in here. It took a long time for this one to kind of establish itself and start growing. But once it did, it was extremely happy. I love the wide form Adansonii eyes with those nice big deep holes and like how wide the leaf is. I'm obsessed. I am just happy that it's happy. In the front here, I have my main 
Brazil, my philodendron Brazil that the other cuttings came from. Always a love of mine. So happy with it. It is so hard to kill this thing. All of the hardly philodendrons are impossible to kill. I shouldn't say that, but very hard to kill. In the back, I have my sort of ugly version of my micans, which is a little scraggly. It got attacked by the cats a few times. It never quite grew the way I wanted it to, but I've got it in this nice window hoping that it grows its leaves. Then last one on this shelf is my standard Hartley Philodendron Heteraceum, the standard green variety. I got this from cuttings from my parents' plant, which I'm obsessed with, and I love this plant so much. It is. It started from about eight leaves into like a little pot, and then lo and behold, you know, a mere, you know, two years later or so, it is just a huge gigantic plant and I need to start taking cuttings from it or putting it into a bigger pot because it is thriving. Now down on the shelf below that is a little less interesting of plants, much fewer vines and things. My cats have direct access to this shelf so if there's something dangling or really enticing they will go for it. So I made sure to put things that are very small and recovering down here. Right here I have my alocasia corms. I featured this these in a video recently too. I've noticed when I was looking around prior to this video that this is starting to rot or at least that one is starting to rot and I don't know why because it's all in the same thing as everything else and nothing else is rotting. But these are all of my fry deck and this one here is full of my mandalay which are still growing roots and starting to grow plants. I'm pretty happy with the progress. I might put them in moss soon just because that seems to be the better approach than this at least for me because I'm starting to get rot and things like that. And I am not getting rot with all of my ones in moss. This is a pile of dirt that formerly was a Calathea white star. I don't know if there's any plant in here, but I continued to water it, so I might be foolish in such things, but that is what that is. Back here is a base of a Philodendron plowmenii. This is one that I had spider mite issues with, so I decided to cut the top off, um, kind of turn them into nodes clean them off, let them heal, and then start a whole new plant. And a new leaf is starting to shoot out on this side. It's got plenty of healthy roots, so it is only a matter of time before it grows back. Right here is actually my Monstera Peru. These, I do not recommend these pots. I got this at the Dollar Tree and I hate them. So I pretty much only put plants that I am not in love with in there. But this is my Monstera Peru. It's producing new leaves. It's got the roots, of course, in the pot itself. I didn't like how it was growing, so I basically cut it into a bunch of little cuttings and just left the base of the plant to see if it would survive. And it does look like it's surviving, it's growing back, but I have not managed to get this plant to grow in a healthy, good looking manner. So this is kind of my last ditch effort to see if I still want to keep this plant. Back here is a snake plant that used to be a center table plant because I figured if the cats chewed on it, I didn't care so much, but this is just some random ZZ, not ZZ plant, <laughs> random snake plant that I got from Ikea. Next to the Ikea snake plant is this lovely ZZ Raven right here. This is one that I bought from a local seller. I just put it next to the window just to encourage it to grow, but it hasn't grown for me yet. It just has the three stalks on it, but when I bought it, one of these stalks was newer and had like a lighter green to it and then it's finally hardened off. In the front here I have an old sushi to go container filled with Cebu Blue Pothos cuttings or little nodes. I have that one leaf there but that leaf was there when I put it in and these have not fully rooted yet. I feel like these they just take a long time but once they do they just kind of go crazy so that is that. And then here I actually have my Philodendron Giganteum Gigantum, Gigantium. This leaf is a decent size. It keeps pushing against the top of the shelves, but it is a decent size and it did produce a second leaf without destroying the first leaf, which is the first time in a long time that that has happened. And that is thanks to me finally putting it in soil. So I did do that like I said I would, and it seems to be doing the plant a lot of good. I'll kind of turn this around so you can see these other ones, but this is a Adabapoenzi cutting. It is doing okay, but it's just in moss and then it's got a little new growth point here. So hopefully that turns into something. I might have a plan for this. We will see. And then these two are my Monstera Standaliana Albo. At least it was sold to me as Albo. This one at least does not give me Albo vibes, but it is growing and doing very well. 
This one over here, on the other hand, is doing a lot better as far as like producing variegation. This section right here is especially good. Little tiny all white leaf, but it hasn't died and it's been there for quite some time. So I will leave it alone, but I do actually really enjoy the Stondoliana now that they're growing. But when I had it as an original plant, when I cut it into nodes and turned these plants into plants, not a fan, but they definitely grew on me. We will see if the Peru does the same thing, but I am not as hopeful. So that is the entirety of my shelf next to the dining room, but we will move on to the living room. All right, so over here, I have my Ikea Millsbow cabinet, but right on top, I actually have a full ZZ Raven plant. And I got this from Costco of all places, and it is super nice, big and full. And I just have to make sure to water it on occasion, but for the most part, it does okay. And I just kind of put it up there just to keep it away. So I turned off the lights just so you can get a look at it. And just for reference, it's about 84% uh, humidity in there and about 67 degrees Fahrenheit. But as we go in, I wanna kind of point out some issues I've had just from the jump here. So even though I've had my fan going 24 seven since I've put plants in this cabinet, I am still getting mold all over this scatter board. I, I do try to wipe it off because it does get everywhere, but you can definitely tell when you look in between the cracks and things, there's mold everywhere. You can kind of see it down here, that little green and it looks puffy. It's so gross and I don't know how to make it stop. I don't know if it's just way too humid and that's it. If there's not enough air circulation, I might have to get a second set of uh, fans. I'm not sure. If you have any suggestions, please put them in the comments down below. But I am definitely dealing with mold issues, at least on the board. I don't see it on the plants, however. The plants seem to be doing okay as far as mold goes. And I will also say that even though this is the same cabinet, all of the plants down here are not having mold issues. And Maggie and Ash are playing and chasing each other right now. Because why not? Why not? That being said, I am also dealing with a spider mite issue right now. Um, I had my Alocasia mandalay on this shelf, and I think that was the main culprit. That is at least the plant that had the most spider mites on it, so I have removed it. I've kind of treated everything, but I am going to be on high alert with these from now on because I cannot deal with more spider mites. And for right now, I am making sure that they are treated all the time. So let's start at the top up here. This is a philodendron varicosum cutting. This is the newest leaf that is struggling to unfurl for some reason. I don't know why, but it is kind of struggle bussing. It might be the spider mite issue, I'm not sure. Um, it's definitely got plenty of water so it's, and it's got plenty of humidity. So I have a feeling that some of these cuttings just didn't do that well. You can see that I've got new growth in the back, but this one right here I had to cut off. So I just think some of these cuttings just didn't do that well and I ended up losing them. This right here is something I bought off of Facebook. This is a tiny cutting of a philodendron fuzzy petiole. And I had never heard of this before, but I am so intrigued by fuzzy petioles, of course. You know, that's part of the reason why I love the varicosum because it's got those nice fuzzy petioles. And when I looked this plant up, I thought that almost she was making it up, but it is a real plant and it does have fuzzy petioles. So I decided to get one. They're apparently very common in Europe, just not as common here, but they're also not very expensive. So food for thought. Next, I have my lovely, but kind of struggle bossing, Queen Antherium or Antherium warwaquinium. Um, I keep getting new leaves on it and the leaves are getting progressively bigger and bigger and it looks lovely. I, this kind of concerns me and I don't know if it's the spider mite issue, if it's getting sunburnt, I'm not 100% sure. The light is of course up here, so I'm gonna keep an eye on that. This right here, this gigantic gangly beauty of a plant, this thing, oh my gosh, it is huge, look at this and is taking over. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet, but this is my Philodendron Splendid, which is a cross between the Varicosum and Melanochrysum, and I am in love. It grows so easy. You'll see this one back here had the spider mite issues a while ago, and so when this new crop of spider mites came up, I was a little worried, but that is what spider mite damage can look like if you let it get too bad. But these ones, 
are all okay. All the newer leaves are good, but this is stunning. And if you look at the back of the leaf, it's got a little bit of that deep varicosum color. Not quite as much as the actual varicosum, of course, because the backs of these are very, very berry colored. And these ones are a little bit lighter, but it's got some of that velvety loveliness, of course. And then it just keeps going and keeps finding new places to grow. Up here, I have my Monstera Albo node that I've had for about a year and it still has not grown. I've put Kiki paste on it and it is still not growing. It has turned pink and I don't know if that's a good thing, but it has got that pink hue to it now. And it definitely has roots. You know, I can tell that there's roots in it. It's just, you know, it's struggling. And of course, when I went to go check on it once, I ripped one of the roots off because why not? But it's still struggling and I put it up there to give it as best a shot as possible with being close to the light. Uh, these are two little containers that I put some cuttings into. This is a string of hearts, sort of little propagation, and it's doing pretty well. It's growing new little shoots off of it. And the roots on these are actually very little, so it'll be interesting to try and take that out because I haven't tried to propagate string of hearts this way yet. Down here is more uh, Cebu Blue cuttings, and it looks like the last time when I was treating it for spider mites, I kind of moved those nodes around. I was kind of curious how these would do for propagation, so that's why I chose those, because I have plenty of String of Hearts and Cebu Blue to try out and kind of trial. So that's all that is. It's just like a little, you know, experiment-ish. These are Alocasia Silver Dragon. I grew them from Corms. And I have that in my experimental video. This one is in that same experimental video and it was kind of struggling with how I had it. This is my El Chaco Red node and it started getting dried out so I decided to put it in one of these and kind of put a lid on it whereas before it was open air just so it doesn't dry out. In the back over here is another experiment. This is one that I bought. It is just in perlite and it has water in the bottom. This is actually a philodendron serpens and it's got a teeny tiny little leaf on it, but this is an experiment and we will see if it grows a little node. I got it for relatively inexpensive. I think it was $15 and this one was 50 because this one was more impressive, but I'm just kind of seeing if I can get them to grow. I have to move the splendid out of the way to show you this plant, which is my only other anthurium. This is my Vitara folium, which was once a gigantic, big, beautiful plant. I almost killed it and now I am rehabbing it. And it's actually rehabbing pretty darn well. I've used one of these little net pots and it seems to be pretty happy. It's got a nice root coming out. So I definitely think a pot like this is the way to go. I do think I'm going to put the Anthurium Warwakrinium in one of these at some point, but for right now, that is that, and it's doing pretty well. Not super interesting, but in the back I have two dragon scale corm propagations. This one looks like it's starting to get somewhere, which is good, but I struggle to kind of keep those moist because for some reason, you know, air gets in there from the fan and it just dries them out. On this side over here, I have some cuttings of Monstera Peru. After I did this and have been struggling with these, I kind of read that these don't do very well when you propagate them and they tend to just, you know, never root and then die. And uh, it's kind of my experience. I'm still gonna let them just do their thing. I'm gonna keep watering it and keeping the moss wet. But for the most part, that is what it's done. It has not done anything. And of course, in the back corner, I have my Alocasia <laughs> cupria. And I am in love with this plant. This is the first time in a long time that I've had more than two leaves. And this is the most recent leaf. It's a little smaller than the other ones, but it's also winter, so I'll allow it. But I am so thrilled. I want this alocasia to be big, bushy, beautiful, and amazing. And it is well on its way. I'm very excited about that. And if we go down, I've got my recuperating Calathea white fusion. It's doing okay. It's got, you know, crusty leaves like Calatheas tend to have, but some of these newer ones coming in are still really nice. You can see that they've gotten some spider mite damage. I'm going to treat it like crazy. How dare it get spider mites again, but you know, go figure. In this jar here, I've got some Albo syngonium that I plan on putting back into my plant and it's nice and rooted. So that's going to be part of my repotting video once I film that, hopefully this weekend. Back here, I've got some other random cuttings. I have this big old Adabapoenzi, 
which is rooted, and then I've got some Syngonium from the plant next door that I will get to, which is this one. This is my Syngonium Red Arrow, or Erythrophyllum, and I'm in love with it. It's got that nice dark green leaf and nice red backs. These are apparently coming down in price, which is good, and it's super easy to grow. This whole vine, you can see, this is the leaf you know, size when I bought it, and all of these big, huge ones have come up since I've put it in this cabinet. Trust me when I say cabinets with lighting like this is going to make the leaves get huge. Like, look at this one and how big it is compared to my hand, compared to like one a little bit ways down. It's almost doubled in size and it is super, super cute. And I love it. I love the color of it. It is just all around A plus plant. Super happy with it. Over here, I have what is what I think the origin of my spider mite problem, which is my bird of paradise. It is struggling a bit right now. I've lost a few leaves on it, but it is still gigantic and doing okay. And it's not too hard to clean. It's just a little time consuming, but that is that plant. I am not going to touch it much because it is gonna contaminate my other plants. Um, over here, I have my neon pothos which is not doing the best. It might also have spider mites because it's right next to this other plant. But you know, I keep watering it and it's a pothos. It'll right itself, I'm sure. And then next to the bird of paradise, I have what is kind of my little Hoya table. I'm not the biggest fan of this table. I bought it from Ikea. I don't recommend it, but I had it. So I'm like, this will work for right now. This one is my Peperomia pepper mill. I've got it outside of its cash po right now because I have noticed that the soil has been getting compacted and so it hasn't been getting water very well. So it's got a lot of dead leaves on it, of course, because it's trying to recuperate, but I have kind of loosened the soil up. I'll keep bottom watering it for probably like one or two more waters just to make sure that the soil does get saturated when I water, but that is on the mend and it's doing okay. I caught it early. Over here, I have two tiny little succulents. I have no idea what kind of succulents they are. These were wedding favors, and of course, you know, I had to get little succulents if that was the party favor. Over here, I've got some cuttings that have kind of started finally pushing some cream out a little bit. Oh, that, that leaf just fell off, lovely. But that is my philodendron cream splash right there. That is what it looks like. I want to make sure I put it next to the window. Oh, and this is a south facing window, by the way. So that's why the bird of paradise is here and why I've put my Hoyas here. This one here is my Hoya Kentiana variegata. It's grown quite a bit since I've gotten it. So I'm pretty happy with it. It's got a couple of little cat bites on it because you know, anything that's long and skinny, the cats are want to chew on. But I've moved my chair away from this table. So now they don't chew on it anymore. This is my Hoya Australis Lisa. This is one of my newest plants that I bought and I got it kind of locally and I thought it was a pretty good price for such a full plant and I've been loving it so far. The leaves aren't nearly as succulenty as some of these other ones. And so I was kind of surprised when I felt it and like actually held it for the first time. It's got some rigidity to it, but it's not thick. And over here I have my absolutely wonderful um, Carnosa Crimson Queen. Love this plant. It is in the teeny tiniest little pot. So at some point I'm going to have to repot it, but I'm kind of dreading that day because I love it and it's just, I don't want to hurt it at all. This is my Hoya Obavada and it is growing with reckless abandon and it's so happy and is just loving being in this window, loving being here and it's just growing very, very well. Nice, thick, big leaves, so super happy with that. And next to the table here in the corner is my Monstera Deliciosa. You gotta have one if you're a plant obsessed person. This is like the plant to have. I haven't gotten any gigantic leaves on this thing in a hot minute, but this one was getting kind of gangly. It was getting really tall, so I ended up cutting it back, making some cuttings out of it, and I put two of the cuttings back into the plant. So this is one of the newest leaves. It is nice and big, no slats quite yet, but it'll get there. This is the plant that it came from, so it's a little bit bigger leaf, just no slats. And then you can tell at the bottom here that they are starting to grow kind of little offshoots. So it's doing really well. That is my little Triceratops that I got from a friend and I love it, but she resides in 
the Monstera, of course. And then next to my Deliciosa, I have my plant shelf over here that I have next to the TV. And you will see at the top up here, this is the plant that fell on my head and I have not untangled that yet. I am just like pretending it didn't happen and ignoring it. And then over here I have my other one that is doing just fine. I'm still just a little bit traumatized from dropping that on the ground and breaking it. One of these days I'll finally sit down and work on it, I promise. Uh, this right here is one of my only two aglianemas. This is my red Siam. It's doing all right. It's got a new leaf on the way, which is really exciting. It hasn't produced a new leaf in a minute, so it's doing all right. And I've got it just right up here on this shelf. Over here, I have an empty pot that once housed a Stromanthi Trio star. I cannot keep them alive to save my life. And so that is no different, but it is over there. Here, I've got some cuttings. I have some of my begonia and then some of my syngonium, which is just below this one. And we'll get to that one in a second. Over here, I have my little begonia rex that I almost killed and it is regrowing and doing all right, but I did almost kill this plant just because I forgot to water it a few times. I mean, why are these plants so picky? Like they want water in order to grow, like who knew? This one right here is a Syngonium Holly. I remember for a minute, these were like all the rage because when they get tons of light, they get extremely light and almost white colored. But then out of nowhere, like no one was talking about this anymore. <laughs> but this Syngonium was in high demand for a minute and I managed to find it in a Lowe's in like one of our hardware stores and I was so excited and picked it up and it's doing really well but nobody talks about Syngonium Holly anymore. From there I have more Syngonium which is my Syngonium Chia Pence. It is in desperate need of a pole and I do plan on giving it a pole at some point but look at how gigantic this leaf is compared to like the ones that it came with. It was a little bit smaller and now they are getting so huge and just so exciting. I just, ah, oh, I love that plant. I love the big heart-shaped leaves. It almost looks like an anthurium, not a syngonium, but it for sure is a syngonium. These are two tiny pots I have, and I definitely need to fix this because I keep underwatering them, and then all of the leaves fall off, and then it has to regrow leaves. But thankfully, these are, you know, syngonium over here, and then this is a mandula pothos, which are very well known for growing extremely slowly. When I say that's accurate, that is for sure accurate, but this is technically a mandula pothos that I got a while ago, and I keep forgetting to water it, and these little pots dry out so darn fast that sometimes I can't catch it. And most of the time I can catch it before it loses leaves. This time I was not so lucky, but that is what that is. Now the shelf below that, I have another Syngonium, which is cuttings from my parents' Syngonium. I have no idea what type, but depending on the light you give it, it either has like a nice thin pink line down the center, or if you give it a ton of light, it goes full pink. So just depending, but that is just a cutting from one of my parents' plants, and I really like it. This is one of my Philodendron Plumenii babies. It is in a little pot and doing all right. I am constantly struggling with this plant because I feel like it gets bugs really easily, at least for me. And so I was waiting for this to get, you know, a little bit on the healthy side. It's finally starting to grow leaves consistently. And right now it actually has six leaves on it. So I'd say it's finally figured itself out and it only took like a year and a half for it to finally start growing again. Back here, I have my Aglionema which is my sparkling Sarah. She is gorgeous and doesn't give me any trouble, and I love her. Over here on the opposite wall from my south-facing window, I have a little banquet dresser that I've put a bunch of my plants on. These plants actually have two grow lights on either side. Each lamp has three light bulbs on it, and I've put grow lights on each of those. You can see that there's different color. This one's a little more orange, that one's a little more white. Yeah, the different colors are basically, you know, just different brands that I'm trying out. I buy them off Amazon, and I'm not 100% sure if they're good or not. But before we go over here, I've got this little side table with just a bunch of tchotchkes and plant stuff on it. And this is the Alocasia Mandalay that ended up getting spider mites. I am not going to get too close to it, but I am in like full treatment mode of this plant. And this is one of my little quarantine areas. And yes, that is a Milano cookie box from Costco. I can feel your judgment. But back to the cute side of things. 
I've got a philodendron Florida ghost. This isn't entirely ghosty. It's kind of more of like that light green, you know, when they try to sell them as mint when they're not really mint. That is what this is. But I've got a new one coming out that is just, you know, doing its philodendron struggle bus. And it's nice and white and creamy. So I'm hoping that I finally get a new leaf that is white instead of pale green because they turn dark green a lot faster. And then if they're white, they stay white and creamy a lot longer. Next to that, I have my Hoya Publicalix Splash. It's not extremely splashy. I have a few sections that are, but the reason I can tell it's a splash is because when the new leaves come in, they are actually green and not purple. And part of me kind of wishes I had the regular kind instead of the splash variety because new growth being purple is extremely cute. But it's doing really well. I've got it on a nice hoop trellis and I love that. Um, I will link it for you. Over here, I have my Syngonium Albo that I took my cuttings from. This is one of my newer leaves. Look at how pretty it is. But I do plan on taking my cuttings and putting them back into this plant and giving it a trellis and hoping that it becomes gigantic. Over here, I have my Philodendron Adabapoenzi. I love this thing because it grows like nothing else. It just keeps growing and it's going so tall and it keeps producing new leaves and being amazing. But I think what I wanna do is I wanna give this a little more substantial of a pole, a bigger pot, and also put my cuttings that I have into this plant. We will see. Over here I have my mother plant for my Philodendron varicosum. It was doing great and growing a bunch of leaves and then the top just randomly broke off overnight and so I have its little top of the plant in here and hopefully I can turn it into a new plant. But it was finally growing like into a substantial plant and then it just broke in half. I was very sad about it. But hopefully that means I'll just get more plants out of it, which I will take. Back here is something similar to my Plumenii that I showed you before. This is basically just, I took a cutting of the entire plant and kind of started from scratch. Of course, the roots are in here. I put, it's nice and greasy because I put that kiki paste on it. And there's a tiny little growth point coming out of the side, but this is my Philodendron Gloriosum. I have all of the cuttings, which I do plan on putting into its own separate pot at some point. Over here, kind of hidden, is a Syngonium Ice Frost. Kind of turning a little less icy, but these new growths are tiny leaves, but they're very, very icy. So I don't know what to make of that. I'm not sure if less light gives it more of that frost or not. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But these new leaves, this one's a little deformed, but this new leaf is very much frosty, whereas this one is almost not frosty except for in the center region. So I don't know. I don't know what that means, but this thing is very gangly and it definitely needs to grow up a moss pole. So I need to come up with some sort of strategic solution for moss poles in these plants. And here we have my gigantic Philodendron Billetiae in this teeny tiny little pot. I need to up pot it soon, but it is a big old monster, super awesome plant. I love the growth pattern, how it comes from the center. I love the orange stems. And it has put off so many leaves since I bought this plant. It has just exploded. Super easy grower, big fan. And over here, I have my Pothos. This is just the Snow Queen variety. I really like it. It has caused me zero problems. This was on a discount rack at Lowe's. I think I got it for five bucks. Nothing but happiness from this plant. I love it. And putting it here, I thought I would lose some of the white variegation, but it is still pumping out plenty of white variegation. So big fan of that plant. It is super easy, highly recommend as well. Then over here, this little gangly thing, which you can barely even see because of all of the Billetier nonsense, but this is my 69686. It kind of looks like a Uepii, but it doesn't have those ridges in here when it gets mature, but it's very cool. And I like that sort of T slash Y shape that it has. I do get a metric ton of floral nectaries with this plant and I don't know how to stop it, but it does grow very easily. I've been very happy with it aside from the floral nectaries cause it does grow like crazy. It is just like a weed and just keeps going and going and going. Like this is my newest leaf. It looks awesome. And I've got another one coming up there. Love it. Can't get it to stop growing if I want to. Then up here, I have my 
Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess. I've talked ad nauseum about how wonderful this plant is and how it keeps growing. I love the little pink stems on it. It's got some like reverted sections in there too, but it is still technically pink princess because as I put it over here, the variegation is starting to come back. And you can tell down here too that it's starting to come back. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with the mix. I kind of like that it's a mix, but for now, I'm happy with it being in there. Over here, I have one of my Cebu Blue Pothos. This is the one where I keep taking cuttings from because this one will not stop growing. You can see how thick around the trellis these stems are, and they're just wrapped and wrapped and wrapped and wrapped forever. I even have a bunch just wrapped around the base because it will not stop putting off runners and plants and leaves. This is just a gigantic mess of plant with all of these runners and everything, but I love it. So this is my Cebu Blue that I have in my guest bedroom. It is not doing nearly as well. I'm losing leaves constantly and I can't seem to keep it watered. But you know, I mean, sometimes Cebus can be like that. I find that this plant is extremely finicky. It is never super happy, but you know, I'll keep watering it. And if I have to, I will propagate it or something like that. It definitely is upset all the time. And in my bathroom, this is the only plant I have, mainly because this window has some blockage here, and this cabinet is basically attached to the wall, so it's hard for me to like lower it down to put plants anywhere in here and get a decent amount of light. But this is my philodendron lemon lime. It's the heart leaf heteraceum, just in the lemon lime version. It's still doing okay. Sometimes I forget to water it because it is the only plant in here. I can't get over them. Super easy to care for. You can neglect them and they still do okay. And over here, these are more sad plants that keep trying to die, at least this one. This is my just standard jade pothos. It is extremely crowded in the pot. I have tried repotting it and it is just not happy. I seem to be watering it constantly and it still loses leaves. Even some of these big old honking leaves, it just loses leaves all the time. But, you know, it is what it is. And for the record, this is a north facing window and that's an east facing window. And, you know, it does okay. Like some of these ones down here, they don't really lose the leaves down here. It's all the ones at the top. So that probably means it just needs more water, which, you know, logistically it's just much harder to water these because uh, you know, they're hanging plants, you have to take them down, you have to let them drip the right amount and like make sure they're saturated. And it's just a lot of work. And I feel like this one also has some compaction issues. So I'll have to bottom water it one of these days and kind of rejuvenate it. But for now, it's still kind of like on the sad side. And then just below that, I have my lovely ZZ plant with that nice stand that I told you about. And it's kind of hard to tell without casting a shadow. But these three right here and this little one right here are all brand new stalks. And I feel like I have not had an explosion of growth on this ZZ plant since I bought it. And it has finally, finally decided to just be amazing and lovely. But yeah, it's extremely lovely. It takes up a ton of space, but that's okay because I love her and she deserves her own spot in the corner there. And then of course we have the plant room. So on this side of the Ikea cabinet, I have this big old philodendron plumini. This is my mother plant and it keeps producing beautiful, lovely new leaves. I can't get over it. I'm obsessed considering this plant went through some serious spider mite issues. So it is improving and I do think it's kind of like close to mended almost, but it does seem to be doing okay, even though it's not getting the best light from the window, but it is getting some ambient light from here. So that's kind of why it's leaning this way, as you can tell. Also, I've got two new growth points coming in and look how cute it is. I love the little leaves and I love the big old honking leaves. I love all of them, they're so pretty. And next to the Plaminii, I have my Calathea Zebrina, you know, has constantly struggled with spider mites and is not doing great. I keep forgetting to water this one because it's behind the Plaminii and I never think about it. And so it's not doing the greatest, but I think most of that is due to my watering issues aka not watering it but you know it's doing okay considering how bad it was and it is recuperating slowly next to that i have my calathea ornata this is one of my favorite plants super beautiful plant totally still has spider mites of course but you know i'm working on it i'm constantly trying to fix some of these plants so I, it's on the, these are on the mend 
but you know it's a constant process until they're finally eradicated and then of course down here I have my lone remaining white star which is not doing great and also one that I continue to forget to water so that that's on me but it's not doing great and it's also in my little quarantine section over here I took a quick break to wash my hands before I go into this cabinet here. This is mostly alocasia. And on the top here, I have my beautiful dragon scales. This is my little baby one. Oops. And you can tell it's 91 uh, humidity in here. Super humid. But that is my baby dragon scale, at least of all of the ones in here. I've got this one back here that is loving it. Its leaves are huge. Like, tell me that is not the most beautiful plant you've ever seen. I love this plant so much. And it is constantly shooting off new growth for me. Love it. And then this one back here, of course, is also doing amazing. No complaints. But that is my other dragon scale back here. And in the front, I actually have my alocasia silver dragon, which is finally starting to grow for me. It has taken so long to get this to do anything and it's finally starting to grow, so very happy about that. And then in the center here, I have an Alocasia Frydeck. This one definitely needs some recuperation from getting attacked by spider mites, and I'll definitely, you know, be working on that. I feel like I'm going through another bout of spider mites right now. It seems to happen every three months, so I'm working on it. And then below that, I still have another Alocasia Frydeck, you know, gigantic beautiful leaves. This one is particularly doing very well and it's got a bunch of little babies in there and it keeps producing stuff and most of these leaves look pretty dang good. This one over here is not doing great and this poor leaf is just like not having it and it just wants to die on me and it's the only leaf in this plant so part of me wants to just chop it off and let it grow back from the corm basically but that one is not doing well. That one's doing great. The one up here is very subpar. So, you know, all my fried eggs are kind of doing their thing. Back here, I have my rattlesnake calathea or lancifolia. And I mentioned how this one is not growing and it finally has started to grow. So I guess being in this cabinet and getting plenty of light is actually doing wonders for it. In the back over here, I have my stromanthe magic star. It has always done well for me and is just continuing to do well for me. It's continuing to grow and do amazing things. I love this plant. And over here, I have the Calathea rotundifolia. I know this one's technically a Gopertia now, but I have been having issues with this soil not drying out. And so I've been getting a lot of this type of reaction on the leaves because it is not drying out and it is just waterlogged like crazy. So I might have to repot that at some point or do something to get it to actually drain properly. I think the soil is too moisture retaining. So that in combination with being in a self-watering pot is just not good for it. So I might switch this and put it not in a self-watering pot. I don't know. We'll see. This one here is my Stromanthe sanguine, sanguine, and it's continuing to put off leaves. Look at how many leaves in this bushel it has put out. It is doing so great and recuperating and looking fantastic. So no complaints on that one. And then from there, as I go down, this is a little short shelf in here and it basically has some cuttings and my Maranta. This is my Maranta lemon lime. It is so hit or miss whether it does well. I seem to lose leaves constantly, but it is growing leaves on occasion. I don't know what I've done to this, but it is kind of struggle bussing right now. We'll see what happens to it, but you can see that there's a growth here, there's a growth here, there's another one back here. Like it's growing, it just also does this. So I don't really know what to do about that. Over here, I have my varicosum little baby plants that refuse to grow anymore. So I think it just needs to be put into a different container. And then over here, I have even more Cebu Blue cuttings and these are finally starting to grow leaves, which means it's got roots and leaves, which means I can finally put these into plants and hopefully sell them. I feel like the popularity of Cebu has gone down quite a bit. So I don't know how much I'll be able to sell that for, hopefully be able to buy a plant or two with that money, but you never know. Moving on to this shelf over here. Uh, this is a south facing window and that is a east facing window just for reference But this one is also getting light from the cabinet next to it 
This is my absolute favorite right now. And of course, that is my Calathea Warskoweskii Velvet Touch. Gorgeous plant, obsessed, love it. I've put in a side plant. I actually cut off the top and put another plant in here. And it is growing and producing new leaves. And it's actually got a side shoot right here right now. So you can tell it is producing another plant, which ah, oh, I just can't get over how much I love this plant. It is amazing. This is my Calathea orbifolia. It is in a self-watering pot. This is one of the Lacusa pots where it's in soil and it is producing new leaves. Look at this. It's going to produce a new leaf soon. So it's got that new leaf. It's got another one coming down there. It is just finally able to breathe in this pot and it's starting to recuperate and do really well. I'm not getting brown edges anymore. It's not looking sort of dire and trying to die. It is recuperating and doing wonderful things. Next to that, I have my black coral snake plant, which for some reason I have given just this beautiful spot next to the window. And it continues to live and do okay and continue to produce new leaves. It's still not the cutest thing in the world, but it is starting to recuperate slowly. Below that, I have my lovely Begonia Benigo Angel Wing. It is so unwieldy that I don't really know what to do with it. But you know what? I've got the space right now, so I'm just kind of letting it do its thing. Um, I gave it new soil because it was drying out super fast, which is part of the reason why it looks so gangly because it's lost so many leaves. But I've got new soil in it, so it's got a little bit better moisture retaining properties. So hopefully it'll do better. And from far away, I love it. It looks great. But up close, it gets a little, little scraggly real quick. But I do really like having begonias. It's just they seem to be really thirsty and need some things that I can't provide for it, but I do love it. And then over here, I have my lovely Calathea Dotty, Roseopicta Dotty, what have you. Love it. One of my goth plants. It's got a new leaf coming in. How wonderful. It is so tolerant of my bad behavior. You know, the reason it looks a little freaky is because I keep losing leaves every time I wa don't water it for a few days. The leaves that do look sad, they usually bounce back and they do okay. I'm just very pleased with this plant for sure. Lovely Calathea, probably and one of my favorite Calatheas for sure. And then moving over here to the last section of plants that you'll be seeing from me. This is the last shelf, the last arrangement of plants. Over here, I have my horrifically mistreated and struggling to stay alive, my Calathea rufa barbara. I still love it. It's still amazing. It's just part of me wants to chop it off and start from scratch, but part of me also is like, you know what? This is a good healthy reminder of why you do treatment prevention for plants instead of waiting for them to like get to this point. So I'm letting it do its thing. I'm letting it rejuvenate. Over here, I have another Calathea that's recovering from spider mites and more to-go containers for future propagation use. But this is my Makiana. I love her. She is also extremely tolerant of my underwatering and tends to do just fine when you underwater it, like doesn't even droop much when you underwater it. I love this plant because it's got the lovely green fronts, but then when you look at the back, it's nice and purple. It's like the same pattern, but like light green, creamy, and pink instead of lime green and green. Just love this plant. Super pretty. Next to that, since I'm down here, is my big old snake plant that I got from a random greenhouse back when I was first starting out getting plants. And this thing has served me so well. I love it, super tolerant. But one of my other plants that is one of my oldest plants is my Adansonii. This is the same as the other Adansonii I showed you, but the cuttings I took from this plant, I planted and made that other one. But this one is doing pretty well. I keep underwatering it because I hate this pot. There's a little tiny drain hole and a very shallow dish. So it ends up, you know, running through and then overfilling in here. And so I have to always pick it up and move it. And it's very viney. So it's kind of annoying. I just haven't watered it enough, which is why I'm getting the yellow edges. It's an underwatering issue, not a bug issue. Next to that is my Monstera Deliciosa. This is one cutting that I was not able to fit into the other plant that I already showed you. Oh no, is this a... And I just noticed that this is not unfurling, so now I have to help it, right? That's how this works. All right, I just had to help this unfurl 
because it was ripping this anyway and so I just ripped off the little corner so that the rest of it can start unfurling. But this is the Deliciosa cutting that didn't fit into my big pot of Deliciosa so I just gave it its own pot figuring it'll turn into its own lovely plant. I have my whale fin Sansevieria over here. Turn my Deliciosa so you can actually see my whale fin Sansevieria. I've given it a nice spot next to the window mainly because this has not grown another shoot yet and I desperately want it to because I love this whale fin Sansevieria and I want a million of them all in one pot. And then this, I've just moved it, but this is the last plant in my collection which is all of my cuttings of Philodendron Gloriosum that I need to hopefully pot up soon. The roots aren't growing extremely quickly. They're a little slow. It's even produced a very not perfect leaf since it's been in cuttings, but still hasn't produced enough roots to pot it up, but I am desperate to pot that up and turn it into a big old plant with a bunch of shoots. I am so excited for it. That does it, that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you on the next one. Don't forget to subscribe to see videos. I post new videos every week. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you next time. Bye.